I'm back. Oh my God, what a wait this has been. The Torpedo Captor X from Two Notes Audio Engineering of France, no less. Yeah, a reactive load, a virtual cabinet, an attenuator, and an IR loader, among other things, which it says on the side. 8 ohm 100 watt reactive load as I said, 32 virtual cabinets, 8 mics and 8 rooms, which two notes is known, known for, definitely. Cabinet volume levels, home club and stadium, I'll be in a stadium at last. <laughs> Immersive headphone experience, wireless USB and MIDI control, sounds good, studio grade audio processing, which probably is, stereo reverb, answer, in answer, EQ and twin tracker. The twin tracker, I can't wait to get my hands on. Whether it's any good is another story, but that's why we're here to find out. Yeah, 469 squids or pounds. So I'm not sure what it'll be in uh, good old America or indeed in Europe, but probably similar. Might be higher in America, who knows? Load of stuff on it. There's a story behind this one, which I'll get out of the way first before we get it out of there and take the lid off and have a look inside. It is an inside and outside review after all. I have to say that at one stage I thought this had never arrived. Well, what do you mean Tony? Well back in February, do you ever remember them days? Back in February when it was all safe and you could go out. Uh, I went out. <laughs> I went to a guitar show in Birmingham. Birmingham, that's the way you say that. And uh, yeah, I saw one of these on a two note stand, or at least might have been a distributor stand, or whatever it was. There it was. And I went across to my friendly PMT, you know them, PMT Birmingham, they're all over the show. So I went across to my friendly man, Jay, in PMT, and uh, asked him if he'd give me some discount because I wanted to review it which he went away and he came back and he said, well, I'll knock you a little bit off, which he did. So I was all happy about that, but he didn't knock much off. I still had to buy it. So I paid him, silly me. <laughs> It'll be out any time, so to speak. So I paid him and uh, yeah, then the coronavirus hit. <clears throat> but in reality, there was far more to it than just a coronavirus problem. Yeah. So what happens? Everything shuts down. No pedal. I'll call it a pedal. We might as well. Nothing. Uh, and then I tried to chase PMT. No, don't waste your time. Anyway, I got this uh, around about June the 10th, <laughs> as a guess. June the 10th from February, start of February that is, I think it was, maybe the middle, I don't know. All I can tell you, it was it's some sort of record and uh, ultimately I went back to my contact at Two Notes who chased around the world. Yeah, really helpful guy, really helpful guy. So if you get any Two Notes problems in England, I can tell you that the man involved will help you one way or another. But listen. Most of us have been through aggravation of one kind or another of recent times with the coronavirus and all that horrible stuff going on. Stay safe. Uh, so you can't hold it entirely against anybody. It's just, that's the way life is. Importantly, I got it in the end, just three months later than everybody else in the world got theirs and all those YouTube channels reviewed all theirs, which is a really sad thing for me because I wanted to get this out pretty early on and now I'm three months down the road. I can't. But I've got some good news as well as the bad news that that was. The good news is not a single one of them will review it in the way that I am. Uh, not a single one of them pulled it apart, literally. Not a single one of them did the things that I normally go through. Now, I'm not the best musician in the world. But well, they're crap at technology, uh, make no mistake, go and have a look at the reviews, you'll see what I mean, they're all sales reviews basically. So let's get this thing out of its uh, piece of plastic.
There it goes. It's pretty chunky, I can tell you that. We'll have a look at all these controls and the rest presently, but I'm just going to undo these four screws and take a real good look inside to see what we get. Well, without stripping it all down, but far more than anybody else will have shown you, so hold on. So here we go. I mean, how hard is it? <laughs> it was that easy. Four screws, and you're looking at the guts. No, not my guts, the guts. Yeah. We'll take a bit look. We'll take a look a bit closer on that one. I can't wait. Well, here we are. I'm not going to take off every last nut and bolt on this thing, by the way. It's not the intention. I just want to show you the overall quality of the product inside, which to me, uh, in all my reviews, that matters. You know, when you see some of this other stuff that's out there, uh, very high prices, some of it as well, and awful inside. Uh, yeah, it always makes me want to come and take a look inside every single product. And that's exactly what we're going to do with this one. As you can see, first thing, you've got this giant heat sink all made of metal it looks like aluminium that does to me we've got a little fan on the end here that blows hot air or sucks hot air it could be either way doesn't really matter but either way it passes air across this and it needs to because when you take a little look further down what you see here is actually there's two of these these are big fat giant resistors and I'm going to come back and talk about those a little bit more a bit later but you've also got these ceramic resistors as well and uh, there they are they probably relate to getting and these do probably relate to getting rid of some of the uh, some of the watts off your amp uh, remember this thing can handle up to 100 watts I think it says and failing that up to about 90 <laughs> So you just don't take it flat out all the time on your amp, but a tone load uh, up to 100 watts, give or take. Yeah, it's got to go somewhere, and this is where it goes. It it it, it blows the air. I think I think it sucks the air out actually. Yeah, because they're the vents that suck. Well, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It doesn't matter. What does matter is there they are inside. This side is on a little PCB. For these types if you can see that and these are mounted directly onto the uh, aluminium heat shield yeah on the top you've got this PCB let's turn this thing around and take a quick look at what's inside the other side unfortunately I did take a look at this uh, but to pull it apart means stripping everything down I don't really want to do that uh, so we'll have a look at the components just from the outside uh, well, you don't really see that much. Top PCB looks to me like it's got all these I.O. on it. And the bottom PCB's got the bottom. Looks like uh, output side. Yeah, so the bottom board seems to handle the output side. And the top board seems to handle the input side and those controls there on the front so we'll call the top board a controller board and we'll call the bottom board the power board why not it doesn't really matter whether i'm right or wrong except to have a good look in there and try and see the overall quality you can see this has been made probably on a machine it looks a machine job to me uh, and the components in there look quite acceptable really yeah, you've got a few little bits and pieces. Uh, I don't know the brand of these capacitors, but I don't know everything. Oh, neither do you. <laughs> One thing to note, uh, I don't know whether you can see in there. You see that thing there on the inside? That's like a sensor uh, for determining the temperature of this uh, heat shield. It probably shuts things down should things get a little bit too hot. That sort of thing, you know. I can't really show you much more in there, which is a real pity. Yeah, real pity. Never mind, eh? 
Well, there it is with the uh, with the lid put back on, and you can see by the size of my hands, the, the sort of size that this thing is. Uh, I don't know. If I was to take uh, a camera, you get an idea of what size it is. I would say this is, uh, I don't know, four pounds, maybe a bit less. Doesn't really matter. But it, there it is. It's it's chunky and it's in a, it's in a very nice. Uh, looks like uh, an aluminium extruded case, which I like to see because you can hear it. That's not. Uh, because it protects the product and if it's going to be out on the road well it needs protection doesn't it okay well let's go from the top uh, we've got this sort of 12 volt DC power in uh, 200 milliamps that's the requirements and it's uh, it's negative center so go and have a look at your power supplies but you are provided with a wall wart so you can make this thing work uh, next in line we'll go along this way are these two things here Outputs it says well, yeah, we've got that one as well. So we've sort of got three But uh, these two here basically uh, stereo out Obviously or dual mono or dry wet signal through the XLRDI outputs Yeah, so there Moving along a bit further this little button uh, That's just a sort of ground button if you got any home just flip it the other way and if you haven't got any on, ignore it. <laughs> that makes uh, sense. Okay, uh, we've got a fan. Yeah, this fan here, this is uh, not the best brand in the world to me, that isn't. But uh, that's just an opinion. Uh, I've seen this nasty fan, this nasty brand before many times. In fact, the bigger ones, they fit on PCs, that sort of thing. But that, that cools the uh, the unit. Uh, what else can I say? Don't cover it up. Right, moving along here to this this MIDI in. Now the MIDI in, it's an eighth inch jack to MIDI cable adapter. That's non-standard, of course, but they don't have a lot of spare space, so they do, you know, uh, use an eighth jack. What else can I say? Oh, by the way, they do include the MIDI cable, so you don't have to run around and try and find a cable to make that work. This USB, uh, again, that's a sort of one well, of the little ones rather than the regular thing, which they're all moving to these days. Well, I can see why on here there's not much space for anything. But they do supply the cable, and that's where you connect your PC. Uh, yeah, so Windows or Mac it will support uh, via the torpedo remote type of thing. Now, if you're going to use uh, a speaker out, that's where you connect your speaker cabinet and that's where you connect your amp. So, in from the amp, out to the cabinet. What more can I say? You've also got this uh, full, medium or low for the volume and this will sort of attenuate uh, the signal somewhat. Now I know that all you guys <laughs> watching this will flip this straight to full. You know, you will, won't you? It's the stadium level. Yeah, you'll play in stadiums every other night. But don't worry about that. That's where it's going to be for you. But for me, in my little studio, it's going to be on low. Uh, or I might move it to the centre, which is for sort of clubs and, you know, bars and pubs and that sort of thing. Now, you can also notice on this that it does say 8 ohms. And you do want to have it in 8 ohms. Don't go wanging the 16 ohms in or the 4 ohms in. Match it up properly. Uh, and it says 100 watt RMS max. So it does say that it will handle 100 watt amp. The only problem is some of these 100 watt amps are 120 or 130. I would stick to about 80% of your volume. I wouldn't go any further than that. Okay, let's whiz across the front. It's not that much to see on any of it, but it's okay. It's all good. Okay, uh, you've got a little LED here. So this LED, uh, what it is, it monitors the input and output levels with... Uh, they call it a grill LED, but I didn't see one in there. Maybe it is in there. In either case, if it turns to red, it's clipping. So nice and simple to, uh, to answer, really. This output level controls the headphone level, but it also controls the, uh, the level of the uh, XLR DI outputs. So quite an important uh, control is that one, yeah. 
Now we've also got this this sort of voicing control, and uh, that basically is just for adjusting the t the overall tone, uh, depending on the tube amp, where you're playing, that sort of thing. So adjust to taste, really, I guess, is the answer with that. Now this one is this uh, space. This sort of widens up the stereo e effect on the headphones and the rest of it, uh, and on the XRDI. So. Again, it's, that's an interesting one that is. Uh, supposed to be uh, quite good actually, some people say. Another thing pretty obvious is this vent here. We saw inside about that and that, you know, it's sort of a, an air vent. So I, I, I think it sucks air in at this end and it blows it out at the back. So uh, you want to keep that clear, especially uh, if you've got your amp cranked up and it's 100 watt. It, uh, you'd be melting things else. Although it's got that safety shut down in there. For monitoring pretty obvious headphone socket now you've got two more things on the front here we've got this input level we can have it on a high input or a low input just press it to whatever you need that's simple enough but then we've got this sort of preset uh, adjuster we'll call it that this looks like the six separate presets that you can store from within the software inside this thing and then you've got your favorite six uh, to work with. That's a plan. They do something like that on the uh, the Roland, the Wazza. Uh, and uh, that's pretty interesting, uh, is that. It's pretty useful, actually. I used that on the Wazza as well. And that's it. Round the front and round the back. We've only got one more area to take away. There's a few friendly tips here on the back from uh, Two Notes, which you can read yourself. Uh, it's got a serial number. There's mine. Who cares? I don't. And we've got the, the usual CE, uh, FCC, We. Uh, you don't have to have a Rosh uh, marker on there anymore, but uh, it probably is Rosh compliant. The thing about it is, as well as having the company name, it's got the CE, the FCC, the We logos, but it also tells you where it's designed and engineered. It's designed in there in France. I can't even say that properly, so I'm not going to. And importantly, it tells you where it's made. It's made in China. And that is also, that's a requirement uh, of legislation these days. So this product is completely uh, CE approved and probably FCC approved, highly likely. And the thing about it is, uh, they're rolling out this uh, Roche compliance also. Uh, right across America, state by state. So I guess you'll be seeing that sometime soon if it's not already there in the state where you're at. Mm. But I'm pleased to say that Two Notes, as they always have, uh, is very good at uh, compliance. And there we have a, a quick overview of the, uh, the inside, the outside, the input and output controls and uh, the control knobs around the front so let's go back up now as a number of you will know uh, i have used these sort of reactive load boxes attenuators virtual cabinets and ir loaders in one form or another uh, for a while off and on uh, they're not always my personal favorite but that doesn't really matter uh, my view doesn't matter it's the product that matters and what we find with it. Uh, this one I like because it's small, well relatively small compared to something like the uh, the Roland Wazza. Uh, that's a yeah that's a big device and it's also very expensive. You can probably get two and a half of these for one Roland Wazza and I don't think uh, it's that different. Well it's a bit different but you know what I mean don't you? So it's great value for money. So what we're going to do now is uh, connect up a computer and take a look at what we get and uh, you know, have a quick run around inside. And then I can uh, do a bit of a demo outside with this working. I'm not going to spend all day on it because you've seen the playing demos from a thousand people. I'm three months late. What a pity. <laughs> but uh, we'll go through the software. Looks pretty good to me compared to some of the products I see. This is, seems to be one of the better ones, but we'll see when we play it, won't we? Uh, because that's very important. But uh, 
knowing the two notes people as I know them, uh, they're very picky. Yeah, so I doubt they all go releasing things that aren't quite where they should be. Okay, just as I'm setting it up, I just thought I'd show you the bits and pieces you get. You get the wall wart, which we spoke about earlier, which is its 12 volt, 200 milliamp negative center. And uh, yeah, standard connector at the back. Plug that in in a second. You get the MIDI cable, uh, 3.5 speaker min din 5PF, 220 uh, centimeters a foot. Yeah, made in China. That's okay though. And you get the USB cable, which I'm just about to pull out. Which is plenty long enough for me and you. Now on a laptop like this, this new uh, Samsung, you don't actually get the old fashioned connectors. You'll know which ones I mean. It's a picture on screen now. Uh, so I have to have a converter to make that work. And I do know that some things can be a bit finicky when working through converters. So that one's just bearing in mind if you've got a laptop like this one. Now I've plugged in uh, down on the floor, which is where most people are gonna plug in. And the cable reaches to about there. So you can see the cable for the power, a little bit short, I think. If you had another foot on that, it'd be really cool. So just as two notes said, there is a bunch of LEDs in there and you can see them glowing now. So we'll see whether they go red later on. You won't see it in here because there's no amp. But uh, don't worry about that. We'll come back to that. Now then, there's basically three things you've got to do. You've got to be connected to the internet. That's an important aspect. Because this will uh, be picked up by Windows when you plug it in. But you've also... What I'd advise you do is download the manual here. Uh, it's down in the, uh, the notes below. You need to download the manual because, you know, there's a lot inside this. If you really spend a bit of time wanting to know everything about it, that's the thing. But there's also two other things you could do. We can download Torpedo Remote. It's down in the bottom corner here. That, again, is down in the notes. And you can download Torpedo Wall of Sound. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that connotations to uh, people that are in prison or uh, is he out now i don't know <laughs> but in, in either case uh wall of sound yeah download both of them get them on your pc and we can go from there i'm going to do that now and i'll be back in a second well here we are now and uh i've loaded up the software and all the rest of it and uh, what we're going to do is going to get in there close and take a, a real good look at what's going on uh, I'll uh, run through some of it. I may run through all of it, but that's a lot, and uh, I may not. So, whatever we do is whatever we do. It's really an overview of the software because there is so much to do within it. Uh, yeah, you, you're getting a lot for your money in the software, I think, uh, compared to when you look at the uh, the Roland was a TAE. That software was well sparse <laughs> that's the word yeah with this software uh from two notes you get uh twice what you bought if you follow me uh, twice as much software as you thought you were getting and uh, it's a lot to take on board if you're not familiar with it so that that's something you need to sort of consider as you go anyway i'm going to zoom in a bit uh, further we're going to take a look at the screen and uh software and get on with it hold on Okay, let's install the software. Here we go. All the defaults. There's the README. Okay. Here we go, let's sign in. Hopefully. License updated. Firmware upgrade. Well, we want to do all that. Just just do whatever it says. Thanks. Yeah, flashing red lights on the front. That's what I've got. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, registered. Okay, well, first of all, we've got this torpedo remote. Uh, this one's 5.23, as you can see. Um, we've got a number of things in here. We've got, uh, we can just quit. We've got the user, I'm already signed in. I can go to my account, go to the license, all the vir virtual cabinets and that sort of thing. I've got directories that I could maybe even want set up and do all that sort of stuff. And I've obviously got the help section, search two notes and all the rest of it. But when this opens up, uh, you've also got uh, another screen which pops up. And it's this one here. As you can see, when you open it up, it's not quite where I'd like it to be. I'd like it to be a proper screen, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. Uh, which is a bit weird, really. I mean, I can move it around and the rest, but when I do that, I'd expect this thing to be, well, full screen. <laughs> I'm like that. Let's take a look at the corner up here and... Uh, have a look what's floating around there. We've got edit, setup. We've got backup, create a backup, a load of backup. And that's a good idea to do that immediately. Create a backup. So you've got at least a, a, a sort of a fresh backup of the whole system. And then you've got firmware. You can check for new firmware uh, and install that firmware. And you can even factory reset everything you've got, uh, which is all pretty good, really. Uh, let's have a look on the setup. Now this setup uh, section, it's pretty comprehensive. It even knows the serial number of your device, what firmware you've got. Are you using MIDI CC uh, or program changes or which channel do you want it on? There's usually only one of 16, but you could go on all like that says, providing there's nothing else actually uh, in the sort of MIDI loop, so to speak, uh, and then uh, that's all good. Failing that, set it up to a specific channel. The voicing in the space I've left as default for now because I haven't really done much with that. I've got a white LED, it's on, and I can see on the front of the unit that it's on. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, it's looking at latency here. For what you hear and what you get uh, it's on 3.5 milliseconds and, and and I think you probably get away with that okay but uh, obviously the shorter the latency the less you'll hear the problems if there are any your tuner frequency is 440 which is what you'd expect it to be yeah how simple is that well set them to your liking and let's carry on okay well I guess before we get too much further uh, with all of this, uh, a little bit of a description of the Torpedo Captor X itself uh, could be useful, really. There's a lot to run through here, and I'm not going to go through every last thing like I've said. But understand the Torpedo Captor X. I mean, let's face it, it's a pretty innovative product, especially for the price and for what you get. Uh, I'll read what the manual says even here. It says, Play in your tube amp in a great sounding room with an exceptional choice of perfectly matched speaker cabinets and microphones. This joyous, well, I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> the Torpedo Captor X for tube amp lovers who crave this every time they play, no matter what the environment. You can play your tube amp with its sweet spot and all the rest. It, it talks like that over and over and over. Uh, oh, I can take the 100 watts and I can listen to it silently but I get that great tone so it's all about really if the truth's known the Capture X is almost like a tone box what it does it will give you the tone that you can't get easily any other way unless you load your amp up there's more to it than just a load box uh, load box is one thing but it's got all these other things in it, like IRs and, you know, room simulations and all the, the sort of different microphones you can choose and all the stuff that you can generally see sitting around in here uh, and all this stuff across the top. And I think, uh, yeah, there's a lot to go at, but very, very interesting stuff from such a tiny little box. You'd, you'd think when you, when you first look at one of these, uh, 
is this going to be any use to me? Well, yes, it is. Uh, whether you're in a house, whether you're in a studio like I am, or even if you're playing out in, you know, uh, the pubs and bars or those sort of places, stadiums, I would, well, you could. <laughs> but usually them sort of guys have got far more money than you and me put together. So uh, I, I would say that uh, for the regular gigging musician, this is pretty useful. Uh, a product and for a studio it's great and for your home it's also great because uh, you don't wake the kids up yeah it sounds like a plan yeah okay well by the way uh, I'm running this on a PC because I'm like that but you can actually take uh, you know a phone or a tablet and you can connect uh, via Bluetooth actually uh, and control everything that way. So you can sort of do it sort of mobile while you're at the gig, which is uh, the idea, I guess. Uh, I don't use that sort of thing personally, at least not on this stuff. But uh, yeah, very interesting stuff. So if you've got a need for that, uh, it's no problem. Now then, when you're in this section here, uh, one of the first things that you want to be looking at, I guess, is the virtual cabinet and IR loader. And there's a specific uh, mode for all of that. Basically, you can control everything in the Torpedo Captor with the Torpedo Remote, this software. It's built around two environments. You can have Virtual Cabinet and IR Loader Mode. Virtual Cabinet is designed for working with two notes Virtual Cabinet, pretty obvious. The Captor X is delivered uh, with 32 cabinets already installed. So you've already got a lot to go at. Uh, when you register the Captor X, by the way, uh, you get an extra three additional cabinets, which is useful. The IR loaders are used for, if you've got IRs in WAV format, uh, you can get them Celestium ones, and there's, there's loads on the internet, loads and there's millions of them for free as well. Uh, you can load them in uh, using this IR loader. Uh, yeah, pretty simple, really. Okay, well, let's create a process. It's pretty simple, really. We can filter stuff from up here so we can turn off the base ones if we want them off uh, and we can leave these others in and select what we fancy if I whiz down to a 4b12 we can go down here there's the kerosene one that's the sort of example they show you and there it is chosen now then moving on from that yeah we've got choices of microphones and speakers. Currently set up to stereo large. If you fancy down here, why don't we go, uh, I don't know, weed warm humbucker, that sounds good. And you'll find that everything will change uh, dependent on these presets. But of course, you can go and change things yourself. So if I want to move this mic, I'll just pick it up and move it around yeah so you can position your mic in different places and uh, hear the result store cabinet preview well I don't fancy that the point is like everything to do with this uh, if you haven't got it, you might be spending some money buying one. <laughs> so, there's another one. Store cabinet previews. Well, they're right as previews, but I don't know. I'd, if it was me, I'd stick to the ones I've got that it comes with, which is what I'll actually be doing in the, the, the review as I go. I'm not going to be doing that all day. You can whip across to Mike B, by the way, over there, and you can move that one around as well. Okay, you can come down here even. I don't know. Whatever you fancy, and you can listen to it. That's the important bit. Now, when you're working with these mics, uh, down the bottom here, you can see that there's a number of devices, or well, we'll call them devices, that you can use uh, from when you're well working on the mics. You've got a gate here we can turn on or off. We've got mic A, which we can choose the different types. We've got a mic B of which we can choose the different types. 
And of course, like everything, I guess you can buy mics. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't spent forever going through the thing on site. I don't intend to. Okay, we can see all the things uh, that you could change. Distance, axis, front or back. See that? You see the mic move on screen. And you can do the same with this one. We've also got up here uh, various things that we can apply uh, post FX. So we've got an EQ, guitar, bass, or custom. We've got an enhancer, and we've got a reverb, and we can choose a number of reverbs that we might want to apply to our tone. Quite flexible, actually. Now, if you want to go and load uh, an IR, you can do this thing here. You can either pull it from the torpedo or from your computer. You can change the directories and the rest of it. I'm not going to go through it all. It's a bit pointless, really. I'll just choose one for now. Let's go for that one. And you can see things change all the way around, uh, which is really pretty cool. And one of the things about it is that you can pull your own IRs in uh, if you've already got them. But you're not stuck with just theirs. And I think that's an important thing. One of the things is, though, that you can pull in different length IRs. I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the responses uh, can be 20 milliseconds or 40 milliseconds, even 100 or 200 milliseconds. Uh, you know, uh, samples, are, I think they are. I wouldn't like to say exactly how they do them because I don't view it, but... The fact is, you can pull in a load of different ones, and uh, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. In any case, I don't want to spend all day uh, <laughs> trying to explain what IRs are. Uh, no doubt you'll learn when you buy one of these, without question. Okay, the cabinet manager. Uh, you can see here, these are the individual cabinets, uh, and you can drop cabinets here, as it says there. From the left panel so if these are what you've imported or well, gained or bought or whatever you've done with them you can pick them up and drop them in here not enough space well there's 32 loaded and if you're going to load any more you've got to take some of them off that's the answer the preset manager but the good news on the preset manager is, yeah, you've got all these and you've got all these directories over here and the rest of it, but look, <laughs> you've got lots of storage and it runs up to 128, of which uh, 34 presets are already installed. So lots of room uh, for where you can go and uh, do your own stuff. I thought it was pretty good, really. We've also got an IR manager. You can grab them from here and dump them in there. As it says, drop your IR file from the left panel here. Well, I'm not going to do that because I haven't got any. But the point is you can. That's the important bit. Now, it's also possible to change the, the routing uh, on the back of the unit. At the moment, you can see that it's set to dual mono. But if I was to click that, it will flip across into stereo. So now the XLR outputs are stereo. And we can adjust the sort of space. Yeah, accordingly. The space knob controls the reverb level, dry or wet, for stereo expansion. Now this little voicing knob down here, that's basically... Uh, controls it adjusts the global sound of the unit coming out of the XLRs a simple one band EQ that is centered at 900 Hz with a 12 minus 12 for a plus 12 dB range so nice and simple to adjust and don't forget that it's on the front of the unit as well just in passing I want to uh, just mention uh, the aspect of impedance you know uh, how many ohms the thing is well the one I have here is an 8 ohm device, and uh, as long as there's no speaker attached, no physical speaker attached to the Capture X, what is seen uh, by the amplifier is 
eight turns, which is what, exactly what this unit is. However, if I was to fit a 16 ohm speaker, and it's connected to the speaker outlet, the volume levels cranked up to full, well, the impedance would be the impedance of the cabinet. So effectively, I could have a 16 ohm cabinet on an 8 ohm torpedo captor X. It's a bit weird, but uh, that's what you can do and that's how it works. I just thought that was a bit interesting and not something I've heard before. Now inside the Captor X, uh, it's, uh, it can be controlled, shall we say, uh, via MIDI. And it's a very extensive uh, list of the things that you can do with MIDI. Uh, quite extensive. I haven't actually counted every last uh, item in there. I'm just having a look now uh, as I speak. But, uh, oh my God, there's a lot of stuff you can change. Let's put it that way. Now, you know there are a number of included cabinets uh, and there's about 24 by the look of it here and about six uh, bass ones uh, 24 for guitar and six for bass uh, which is pretty comprehensive really I mean you can carry on forever can't you <laughs> a lot of these guys that use this sort of stuff do carry on forever I'm not one of them, so I'm never going to go and, you know, I'll probably stick to the presets and thanks very much. That's just me. Once I get the presets as I want them, of course. Yeah, you'll notice there are a number of uh, microphones you can choose. Uh, that's a Royer 121, for example. They just call it a Ribbon 121. And, and one of the problems I've always found with every one of these uh, types of applications that I've ever seen to tell you the truth, we all use these very funny names that you've got to sit there trying to figure out exactly what they mean. Now, in the case of that one, I don't think it's that hard. There's a few of them that are easily workable or, or figure outable. That's is that a real word. Uh, and it's the same when you come down to everything else. You know, when you get to some of this stuff, well, Brit 30th, I guess, would work, but some of them. Well, well, they've got real names on that one. <laughs> what can I say? Well, I've just been showing you a few things here. I haven't been spending forever going through all of this uh, to the depths that, honestly, you could you could spend oh, a couple of hours just faffing around with this. I'm not going to do that. I've given you a little bit of an insight into it. I'm not perfect with it, and I don't want to be... <laughs> Yeah, so my own view with this is it's uh, it's pretty cool software. And just before I do wander off back out to this application, uh, you've got presets on the front of the uh, Captor X. And you might be wondering, well, how do I set them? Or how do I know what they're set to? If you just go to the front of the Captor X, if I turn this to number two, everything will flip to what that setting is currently. You can see them whipping around. That's number three, number four, number five, number six. Well, the speakers tell you a lot, don't they? <laughs> you know, let's whip back through them. Yeah, you can see what's going on. Yeah, and clearly the first one's heavy. <laughs> but that's just, uh, those, are, those are what they've preset to. Uh, and you can see that you could very easily go and do your work in this now, get everything as you want it, and save it to one of those presets that are choosable on the front of the unit, which uh, I think is a really good idea. As I said, I've seen it before in uh, things like the uh, the Wazza uh, TAE. That, that's got a similar thing. I think that's got 10 that you can have. But this is a very small unit, is the Captor X. And, uh, you know, you've got to... Remember that, uh, well, there's not a lot of space, is there? You know, it's all good. Uh, notice another thing. If I touch something on the front, by the way, look at the space control here. I'm just going to adjust that actually on the unit. And you can see that it's all controllable actually by the unit. Yeah, very clever. I like this as well, the tuning. Yeah, now you can tune your guitar. Nice. Okay, well, it's just a bit of an overview of the uh, 
the software it can be as complex or as simple as you want it that's the important thing if you're one of these uh, tone hounds that goes to the nth degree great for you this software will do it and two notes is known for the software you get the wall of sound application and all the rest of it now I'm not sure whether that's included or whether you think that is but there are other versions if I remember right maybe it's changed let me tell you what I know and I'm not going to go and check either <laughs> you go and check that's what you want but the thing I like about it is the simplistic part of things rather than all just the complex stuff like I'd see for example in uh, an Axe FX3 which you'd got to be a bit distorted to want to use this is much simpler and uh, that's what I like to see simplicity you don't want to be faffing around all day when you're stuck out for example at a gig that could be uh, really problematic uh, yeah it's not something you go for and that's why I like the presets on the front of this uh, you've got six of them it's probably more than enough that you want for a gig so I like the simplicity but if you like complexity it's there best of luck <laughs> I've got a few more things I want to cover uh, before we move on notice uh, that I actually printed out the two notes capture X manual and that's always very very useful unless you're one of these that can do it on a, a screen that's this big on your phone I don't want any of that thanks maybe I'm old-fashioned must be my age why don't you blame me for that <laughs> oh my god if only you knew uh, anyway I doubt even those people that claim everything and know everything are going to be able to remember all of these parameters down here and all these parameters down here and they're going to be big enough to easily read I mean you can start zooming in and faffing around but there's not better than a nout yeah, there's nothing better uh, uh, than a proper manual and it'll take you right through everything that I couldn't generally be bothered with but uh, as you can see it's very good it's very good what I also like to see in this manual other than the declarations of conformity and all the rest they're all there it's all good I like to see that sort of thing where you see a lot of products that flout it what I like is the warranty yeah the warranty uh, it's a two-year warranty it says here from the date of purchase the original purchase so when purchased from an authorized two notes audio engineering dealer so if you buy it from gray markets no warranty well except from the seller but that is in there it's a two-year warranty I like to see that I like the build quality of this thing as well it's, it's really well made even though it's made in China yeah yeah consider moving to the Philippines or something because China's not well it's getting a bit out of fashion and uh, yeah sooner or later you might be stopped from importing from China who knows yeah there's something else you get as well with this unit uh, welcome it says here they want you to go online which is you really got to do that <laughs> or you're not going to get uh, all your cabs and the rest of it but you can re redeem here it says three additional virtual cabinets and 30 exclusive presets by registering your ca capture X with torpedo remote scan the code and off you go we can scan my code if you want but it doesn't matter <laughs> I've already done it yeah so that's good you got this little introductory thing as well uh, showing you a few settings of uh, how you could wire up for you you know depending on what it is you're doing uh, if you've got a cabinet audio interface because you can use it as an audio interface uh, front of house that's on site and, and then it's record now on mic later no mic oh no okay well many people could harp on uh, and go to the nth degree that isn't what you want you know this is a relatively low cost device uh, I think in in England it's 460 pounds or something like that I got a tiny bit of discount but that's a battle for it let's put it that way uh, so don't try they won't give it you <laughs> having said that it's probably worth the money they're asking 
and uh, yeah, I like it actually. I've looked at Two Notes products before, and the one I saw before, well, it was okay, but it was very expensive, and it, I don't think it did as much as what this one does. Things move on, don't they? Yeah, so pretty good value, especially if you're not one of these guys who wants to, uh, well, who wants to go right down into the depths. It's better value if you don't do that, because those type of guys can spend hours and hours and hours. Oh, me and you, ordinary people, well, we'll probably faff around a bit, get the sound right in them headphones, take it outside, plug it in, yeah, that sounds about right, and away you go. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. <laughs> so, how would I score it? Yeah. Well, I'd give it about an 8. An 8? Why not a 10? Well, to tell you the truth, there's a few things that are a bit funny. Uh, and one of them, well, go on, laugh. <laughs> There's no on and off button. <laughs> Believe it or not, no on and off anywhere. Yeah, nothing. Ground lifts, every, there's everything except what I'd like to see. I also didn't like the uh, power supply too much. If you want the truth, it's just a, a low cost power supply. It does work, as you can see, it's got a nice light on it and all the rest of it. Uh, but I think that. Well, a bit of a shortcoming, no, no on and off. I mean, <laughs> and the power, the power side of things, you know. Uh, but don't let it detract you. It all works. It's all going to work fine. I'm pretty sure it, it would. Uh, but you can see the areas where maybe, well, could have been a bit better. You know, how you'd have done it, I don't know. Maybe you could have had one of these that you could have pressed on and off with a press. I don't know. I'm not two notes, but... That'd be one of the, the points I'd raise. Now you all can see the unit outside, uh, you know, played. And uh, yeah, it's impressive enough to matter. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a great little device for the money. I really do. An eight out of 10 is a good score. The bad stuff gets two or three out of 10. Yeah, but eight out of 10 is pretty good. Uh, and I think for the money, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, for the money. You can get better, cost you a lot more. Even two notes make all the models. You ought to go and check all them out just before you buy any particular one. I think that's also something that's uh, worth doing. Uh, decent company, been around a long time. More can you say? And that that guy that helped me get this, I think his name is Mr. Lumsden. I just forget. I've got it on the email somewhere, but he chased around like you wouldn't believe to eventually solve the problem for me uh, through not getting one. As I said, it's a bit too late now. It's months down the road from where everybody else had them, but uh, don't worry about that. They don't do what I do. I'm sure they will do far better plain ones. Uh, and they might do far better of everything, but no. they didn't buy theirs, did they? <laughs> I've got a few uh, different reviews coming up. Uh, some are more interesting than others. Uh, one of which is a, uh, a Marshall snakeskin amp. Yeah, I know more about that for now, but uh, it should be an exclusive if I can get it before everybody else, and I think I can, like I did with the uh, the stealth amp. That was uh, that's a great review. I've also got uh, uh, a rack unit uh, that I bought. I'll tell you what it is, doesn't matter. It's a Helix rack. I've gone and bought a Helix rack and I'm gonna actually take the rack I've got that I've had for about 25 or 30 years, by the way, uh, that's got loads of stuff in it. And we're gonna take all that out and we're gonna do a bit of upgrading uh, in on camera and then uh, do a run through of the Helix rack as it is today, as compared to the one that I reviewed oh, years ago. Uh, that was a good review at the time, so I. I think the Helix rack review will be also pretty cool. Uh, and part of that rack, I've got uh, another device 
Yeah, I bought a, a, a Line 6 Relay G90. Now, it's not the newest of rack uh, radio or wireless, but it is a very common one if you're out on the road or you're going out on the road. And uh, I only bought it to review, if you want the truth. Uh, so, well, it is what it is, uh, but you'll see it in action in the rack, uh, installed with all the other stuff that I've got and some will be coming out and some will be staying that like I said should be very interesting yeah so that's it for now uh, yeah just be careful out there won't you yeah with this virus still kicking around I know you guys in the States it won't get me yes it will uh, listen be careful just keep away from the the madding crowd that's what I'd say right let's go out there and until next time Get out of here.